Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z. And it dawned on me the other day that I haven't given you guys an update on my Elmwood Baseball League, the league in which um, there is a commissioner and we make our CM files and we send the CM files into the commissioner and then he runs the games one week at a time. So we are currently um, 94 or so games into the season. At least my team is at game 94. Some teams might be at 91, 92, 93, 95, who knows. But I'm at game 94 now. We, uh, the Providence Grays, my team is terrible. Um, in fact, I have had to jettison some guys because I had some underperforming people right out of the gate. So if we look, um, you'll remember that I had Nelson Cruz. So let's look at my team statistics. And uh, we'll go to primary. And you can see that for me, Cruz was hitting 244. He was hitting a robust 244 with 11 home runs and 160 at bats. Now, the 11 home runs and 160 at bats and 23 RBIs, that's not too bad, but it's not really Nelson Cruz ish. And he is hitting, uh, and he was hitting 244 for me. So I jettisoned him and I traded him off and I got John Gray uh, back in the trade that I did with the Painted Post team. But now let's look at Painted Post and see how Cruz is doing. Cruz for him is hitting 209. 209 and 201 at bats with only 11 home runs and 25 RBIs. So for whatever reason in this Elmwood League, Cruz, Nelson Cruz is not that great to say the least. So if we click on Nelson Cruz uh, on uh, Painted Post to see his overall statistics, uh, I don't know if you can see it down there, but in 361 at-bats, he's hitting 224. In real life, Nelson Cruz for the Twins on la in last year's set had a 5.6 war. Overall, for two teams playing all season long this year, he has a 0 .3, 0.3. So that is, uh, yeah, that's what we're, we're talking about. But let's go to the standings. We'll take a look at the, uh, we'll take a look at the standings so far. You got the Adams family, not a surprise. They're leading their, the Northern Division with a 57 and 40 record. Now, what is surprising is Green Lakes is 54 and 41 and only two games behind them. That's kind of a surprise because they, um, in the preseason, um, simulations that I did, Green Lakes was going to be like a 500 team, basically a 500 team and not a playoff contender, but apparently they are. Now, Kekianga is only four games behind Adams and only two games behind Green Lakes. They were expected to be a contender and they still could quite definitely be, but um, they need, they have some work to do. Uh, Bobtown is terrible. They're 25 and 66. They're even worse than me. And you got to go some to be worse than the Providence Grays. Let me just tell you. Uh, the Gwinnett Stripers. This is the team that had a general manager at the start of the, in the preseason. He did all, he did a whole bunch of trades. He did like 50 trades for the team. And then he just quit. He fell off the face of the earth. He didn't even officially quit. He just fell off the face of the earth. We couldn't find him. So um, they're 19 and 73, terrible team, only barely winning 20% of their, their games. In the uh, upstate division, you got the Enwell Bird Dogs coming in at 64 and 30. And they're followed closely by um, Wooster, the Wooster War, War Worms at 62 and 33, only two and a half behind them. But then everybody else after that, we're, we're all probably out of it. Um, even though Caseville's not doing badly, 52 and 40, um, and a 565 winning percentage. Um, well, he's not out of it. Let's not say he's out of it. He could make the playoffs because it's the division winners and then the next two teams by record.
um, on each side of the league. The two divisions at the top are one side of the league, and the two divisions at the bottom are the other side of the league. So Caseville could still make it, and then, of course, Federal Way and my Providence Grays, no, we are not going to make it. He's 48 and 46. Uh, and I mean, unless he goes on some kind of crazy winning streak, Federal Way, there's no way. There's no way for Federal Way. And there's no way for me. 32 and 62, 340 winning percentage. And you know what's really crazy about this is as bad as I'm doing, 32 and 62 with a 340 winning percentage, I'm still better than three other teams. I'm better than Gwinnett. I'm better than Bobtown. Um... Uh, I take that back. I'm better than two other teams, and I'm tied with one. I'm tied with the Bronx team. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's crazy. I'm not even going to get the first pick next year, as bad as I am. And then you got in the other division of the uh, the first division of the other league. You got the New York Knights uh, leading the way, 59 and 35, four ahead of Kremlin. I expected Kremlin to win that division, but they're... Uh, Right now, they're four games back. And then Philly at 50 and 44, nine games back. They Maybe they can make the playoffs, but they're going to have to win a good percentage of the rest of their games to do that. Toronto, 37 and 57 is out of it. Looks like Bronx, definitely 32 and 62 gone. You got Painted winning the other division. That's the commissioner's team. Not a surprise there. He's 57 and 37. And he's two games ahead of Cleveland. Now, Cleveland is a surprise. The Cleveland team is kind of a surprise to me. Um, I didn't expect them to be that good. They're followed by NorCal. It's 48 and 46, nine games back. Then the Gas House Gorillas at 47 and 48, just a game under 500. Probably not going to make the playoffs. And then the West Hills team is 34 and 58. And that's another thing. Not only am I tied for the third worst, but I'm only two games worse than West Hills. So in theory, I could have like the fifth or sixth pick next year in the draft, as bad as my team is. So let's go look at that bad team. Uh, you got Providence right there. So yeah, team stats. 32 and 62. Home record is 10 and 36. We're not winning a lot at home, but we're not winning a lot on the road either. Although on the road we are, it looks we're actually almost decent on the road. 22 and 26. Versus lefty starters were 8 and 21, and versus righties were 24 and 41. And uh, extra inning games were 3 and 4, which is that's not too bad. One run games were 9 and 15. That isn't great, but it's not embarrassing. And the last 10 were 5 and 5. So back to my stats here. Um, there's some notable things I want to point out. First of all, Tim Anderson hit like 335 last year. And he has a 286 batting average for me right now. Um, not doing nearly as well as he should be doing, um, at least in my opinion. But it's a 20-team league. We also don't have any injuries. I didn't know that when I started the whole um, season. I figured that there was going to be, you know, the regular injuries, but I had forgotten that we voted down having um, injuries last past one game. There are injuries, but they don't last past the game in which they happen. And that is a setting that you can have uh, if you do one of these leagues. So Anderson is underperforming. Wendell is doing well, but he's doing about what is card, what you would expect. Cruz, I already mentioned, way underperformed. Um, Gritchick... Gritchick isn't going to do well. Guys that don't have high batting, like even if you hit, like if you hit 260 something, 268, 270, in a 20 team league where the pitching is that much better, you're going to have, you're going to hit a way, a way lower in general than that. So he isn't really having the greatest season. I mean, really what I was bitten by was I was expecting my offense to be the big thing. I was expecting my offense would carry us, 
and then the pitching would do whatever it could do and maybe help out, but it really almost turned out to be the opposite, as you'll see in a minute. Because we're hitting 225 as a team. That's, uh, you know, that's terrible. Um, and you got Jimenez is hitting 216 for me. He had a 290, he hit 296 last year. Supposedly a 296 card, but he's hitting 216 um, with 17 home runs. The 17 home runs, that's fine, but the 216, it isn't. Barnhart is hitting 202. Now, again, Barnhart, I don't remember what he hit, but it wasn't 202. It was better than that. Um, Cabrera is hitting 183, but he hit like 240 or something last year. So again, in, in a league where you whittle it down to just 20 teams, the hitting tends to suffer, and we're seeing that. But uh, my hitting was so good, I didn't think... And I had so many guys that could hit, like Cruz and Anderson and Wendell, that I didn't think it would affect all of them adversely, but it almost did. I mean, Wendell's like the only one that didn't get snake bitten by that. So we go down here to the pitching. Now, see, here's the, the pitching is has I have a 466 team earned run average. Now, I don't know what you know about my teams historically, but a 466 earned run average for my team in any given season, in, in any given Elmwood season, that's pretty good. Because I'm usually in the fives, I'm usually sometimes even in the sixes. I have terrible pitching. And I've never been able to put a good pitching staff together. But apparently, this time, I at least put a serviceable one together. With a 466 team earned run average, like I have here, if my hitting had been anywhere close to what was expected, I would probably at least have a chance of making the playoffs. I'd probably be around 500 and have a chance. But my hitting just went completely south, just way off the Richter scale and, and, and into the crapper. But you can see, you know, I got uh, Petit, Yasmero Petit, 188 earned run average. Um, Detweiler. Ross Detweiler has a 189 earned run average for me in 38 innings pitched in relief. Um, Jace Fry, 274 earned run average, left-handed reliever. And that's another thing. Usually lefties don't do very good in these slimmed down leagues because most teams can send a righty heavy lineup up against them. But for me, Fry is doing great. Now, here's the really surprising thing. Porcello. Uh, Rick Porcello has a 3.69 earned run average. He's 5-2. and two. I only pressed him into service because I traded off some of my pitching when I, when I fell out of, when it looked like for sure I wasn't going to contend. So I needed other starters. Porcello was a guy that I didn't even think I was going to play very much. But I pressed him into service, and he's my best starter, even better than Gosman. And Gosman had a good year last year and a good card. So Porcello has a 369 earned run average, and he's 5 and 2. He's 5 and 2 on a crappy ass team like this one. 5 and 2. And uh, 78, 75 hits allowed in 68 innings, which for his card is actually very good. Gosman is right below him, 405. He's 5 and 9, though, but with a 405 earned run average, which again, in this league, that's pretty good. Um, Garrett Richards, he hasn't pitched much. He's got a 413 earned run average, but he hasn't really pitched all that much. Lester, I obtained in a trade with a guy, and Lester, since coming up, this is what Lester has done for me. Terrible. Again, he's a lefty, and he wasn't good last year. And yet he has a 418, what is that? 418 earned run average. One and one for me with a 418. There's no way that card should be anywhere like that. Um, Grenke, now Grenke has a 478. He's 7 and 11 with a 478. So Grenke's kind of underperforming. I would have expected Grenke to be at least a little better than that, even in a 20 team league. And then Tyler Anderson with a 5.16, and so on and on. You can look 
you can you know you can take a look at these guys um Clevenger, I traded. He has a 718 earned run average, and he hasn't pitched yet that I know of in real life. So I traded him off because he was going to be a guy I would have had to protect next year for him to make my roster. And I generally, I don't like protecting guys that can't play for me. Although I will do that with Eloy Jimenez. So uh, that's, yeah, that's a look at how the, my team is doing it's not good so um yeah and then again we go back to the standings you take a look at the standings there so we'll see how it all pans out in the end i'm you know hoping i get a nice pick maybe the third right now it looks like the third pick in the draft is the best i can hope for because um gwinnett and bobtown are just t terrible and um, I mean, like worse than I could get, even trying to get that bad. So I'm hoping for the third pick, but even at that, I'm tied with another guy that could potentially end up worse than me, and that would knock me to fourth. And then if I end up better than West Hills, I'm I'm all of a sudden I'm picking fifth. The good news is I probably can't. I probably there's no way I'm picking any worse than fifth, but it could be fifth. So that's my Providence Grays. Another bad season, but you know, I'm used to it now. And also in this Elmwood League, I mean, you just saw it. There's no way you can predict how guys are going to do. It doesn't matter if they have crappy cards like Porcello and they end up pitching great or playing great. And it doesn't matter if they have great cards like Nelson Cruz and they end up hitting 222 like Cruz is in our league. It's just, it's a crapshoot. It's really a crapshoot. You really have to be in a league with more teams, 24 teams, 26 teams, 30 teams, for it to be, you know, even somewhat, you know, I guess, predictable. Not even, not even, let's just wipe out realism. Just to even be able to predict how your players might do, you've got to have like at least a 24 to 26 team league. I mean, it looks like to me. So this is a league that going forward, I think I'm just going to kind of just throw people together. I'll draft who I draft. If, if I make a trade that makes some sense, you know, that seems to make some sense to me, I'll do it, but I'm not going to necessarily do it because I'm thinking this guy is going to really propel my team. I'll just do it usually maybe for like the future, you know. Like um, one of the trades I did, I got Michael A. Taylor. And I just got him because Kansas City plays him all the time, and maybe with full with a full time slate of playing time, he'll improve. Although so far he's proven that that's not even true. Some of the Washington guys here predicted that if he were to ever play full time, he would be a good player. Well, they were apparently wrong. And he's already thirty years old. So if he hasn't figured it out yet, he's not figuring it out. So what do you guys think of all that? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Uh, if you have any tips for me, anything you might know, you know, if you're in a 20 team league and there's things you can figure out that might help me uh, before our trade deadline. I think our trade deadline is still 24 games away, something like that. So like three weeks, something like three weeks away. Um, Give me any tips you might have. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm at my wit's end with this team. So um, I guess for right now, that's going to be it for me. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.